And now we look at uh, stochastic and uh, mini batch versions of these algorithms. Okay, so we'll digress a bit. Actually, we should have ended up somewhere else, but I'm going just going to digress a bit. Okay, so this is the original gradient descent code that we had, and I've highlighted something in this red box. Okay, so notice that the algorithm actually goes over the entire data once before making an update. It has going over this entire for loop which is over all the data points. Of course, in this toy example, I had only two data points, but in practice, I'll have many, many data points. I go over all the data points, compute the derivatives, and then make this one update. Okay, why? Because that is the right thing to do. Okay, this was the exact formula that we painfully derived, right? That the gradient with respect to the loss function, right, which we had the summation i equal to 1 to n, remember? And the true derivative was a sum of the derivatives with respect to all the data points. That's what we analytically derived. And hence we are doing that, right? Because that's the right thing to do, not for any other purpose. Okay, that's what it should always be. Right? So that's the right thing to do. Because this is a true gradient and we actually derived it. Okay. And hence this was not an approximation. So all the theoretical guarantees hold. If I do this. I know that now this is the true gradient or the true derivative and if I move in the direction opposite to the gradient, everything falls in place because I proved it using Taylor series. Okay. <coughs> but what is the flip side of this? This is the right thing to do, but what's the flip side? If you have millions of points, you'll go over all these million points and make this one update. Now imagine the consequence when you are in a plateau region. right? Even with momentum or whatever, your movement in the plateau is going to be relatively smaller. Right? You are going over these million points and making that tiny delta update. Right? So imagine how much time it will take your algorithm to converge. You get the problem? Okay. So the algorithm will take a million calculations and then make one tiny update to your W. Okay. This is going to be very slow. Can we do something better? Always. Right? So let's take a look at stochastic gradient descent. Fine. So I've done a very subtle change to the code. What is it? Don't tell me indentation. But that's what I've done. So you can tell me that. So what is happening now? For every data point, I'm making an update to my W values. This is perfectly fine. Yes. Okay. Now the algorithm updates the parameters for every single data point. If you have a million data points, how many updates will we make in one pass over the data? A million. For every data point, we'll make an update, right? So that slowness factor in what is known as batch gradient descent, right? Batch gradient descent is when you look at the entire data and then make one update, okay? What is the flip side? What was this module titled? Stochastic gradient descent. So what is the flip side? These are not the true gradients. The true gradient is summation over all the points. Now this is no longer the true gradient. This is just a point estimate, right? This is just a approximation of the gradient, right? And stochastic because we are calculating the gradient based on a single data point, right? We're just sampling one data point and computing the gradient that this is what the entire population looks like, right? This is almost similar to tossing the coin once and saying that this is what the probability of heads is. If it lands at heads, then the probability is one, otherwise it's zero. You see the error, you see the problem with that, right? As opposed to tossing the coin a thousand times and then deciding the probability, you're just tossing it once. So this is always going to be erroneous, right? This is going to be bad. So now there's no guarantee that each step will decrease the loss. Why? Because the guarantees were only when you were doing the right thing, which was to compute the gradients over all the data points. Now there's no theoretical guarantees, right? because it's all stochastic now. So it is possible that in a particular data point, your loss might increase also. The overall loss on the data. With respect to that point, it might decrease, but with the overall loss, right? So now let's see this algorithm in action, and I want you to make certain observations about this. So this is the code that I'm going to run now, okay? So let's see. Okay, so I'll start. I have to observe and let me know. Uh, this is really becoming an eye test for all of you, but that's good. Okay. So, so far nothing interesting to observe or already maybe. Okay. 
uh, remember I am ru running gradient descent. This is not momentum, not nest drop. This is gradient descent. Okay, I have already given you the answer. What do you observe? <laughs> I can still pretend an answer. Right? Let's, let's do that. We see many oscillations. Why? Why do we see the oscillations? Are these oscillations the same as the oscillations that we see in momentum? No, these are different. Everyone gets that, right? Why are there oscillations? What does each click here correspond to? One data point, right? So what is happening here? Because we are making greedy decisions, right? We are looking at one point. This point says, to decrease the loss with respect to me, move in this direction. And we blindly move in that direction, right? Now we look at the next point. It says, oh, no, no, wait, wait, you need to move in this direction. So we again move in that direction. So all these points are actually trying to just make things better for themselves. They are not thinking about what is happening to all the other points in my data, right? So all these points are actually competing with each other. So some decision which I took with respect to where to move, which was locally favorable for one of these points, may not be good for the other point, right? Hence, I keep these tiny oscillations which I make, right? These are the stochastic noise that you are seeing now, right? Everyone gets this? Okay? This is fine? Okay. Now, can we reduce the oscillations by improving the stochastic estimates? Always yes. Okay? Fine. So, let us see. What do I mean by that? So, we will look at a mini batch version of this. So, what I am going to do is, Instead of, so this code is actually for uh, mini batch stochastic gradient descent. It's a very minor alteration on the stochastic gradient descent. I'll just let you stare at it for a minute or so. What I'm doing here is, I'm instead of doing it for every point, I'm waiting for a certain number of points and then making the update. Right? That's what I'm doing here. Okay. Now for this, I have kept k equal to two. What does that mean? I look at two points, compute the derivatives with respect to them, and then make an update for two points at a time. Okay. What do you expect? No, what do you expect with respect to this code? Okay. Okay. So let's see. We'll try to run this now, and you'll start seeing a red curve here, and make some observations about this. Okay. So this is the red curve. Yeah, it's visible. Uh, don't read any of those. We need to fix this, right? Uh, these uh, bullets should come only after the curve has finished its journey. Okay, don't read any of that. Uh, so, what do you see about the red curve? It's completely contained inside the black curve. That means its oscillations are smaller than the black curve, right? Does that make sense why this is happening? Because now you are not listening to just one point, you are listening to two points and then at least you are doing something better, right, instead of just taking one. So what is the analogy with respect to our coin toss experiment? You are tossing the coin twice and then deciding what is the probability of heads or tails, right. So it is always going to be slightly better than tossing it only once, right. And now what will happen in the limit if I keep increasing this? You will end up with a batch gradient descent where you look at the entire data. So looking at only one data point is bad because it's very noisy. Looking at the entire data is bad because it's very time consuming. So you need to do something in between which is mini batch gradient descent. Okay. And typically you look at values of 16, 32, 64, but it also depends on the amount of data you have, right? If you have a billion points, you might actually want to look, uh, because if you have a billion points and you have a batch size of 64, you'll take 1 billion by 64 times to finish the data once, right? So you might want to keep a larger batch size at that. But just ignore that. But you will try different batch sizes and see which one works better. So in the assignment, are we asking them to experiment with batch sizes? Yes? Okay. No, no. Uh, sorry, wrong question. Are we asking them to implement stochastic and mini batch also? Or only vanilla? Mini batch. Okay, fine. That's fine. Okay, so you'll see this in your assignment. Okay, so everyone sees what was the difference between stochastic and mini batch, right? You have better estimates now, 
and therefore this red curve is contained inside the black curve ok fine ok. So, these are some things to remember one epoch get used to this terminology one epoch is one pass over the entire data one step is one update to the parameters n is equal to the number of data points and b is equal to the mini batch size. Now, you have to fill in the second column in vanilla or the batch gradient descent what is the number of steps that you take in one epoch 1 in stochastic gradient descent n n in mini batch gradient descent n by b everyone gets that. So, get used to this ok. So, this epoch step batch size all this is something that you will see regularly when you are reading papers on deep learning ok fine. So, similarly we can have the stochastic versions of momentum based gradient descent and nestor of accelerated gradient descent ok. So, these are just the codes it is very easy to see what is happening here again uh, basically this is just an indentation right. So, if you look at the difference between the two codes I have just indented it inside that means I am making these updates for every data point right and same thing you could do for Nestrov also ok. Now, let us see uh, this guess what is it this is the gradient descent stochastic gradient descent ok. Now, let us see if you have really understood <coughs> nag and momentum based gradient descent one of these curves here corresponds to stochastic nag the other one corresponds to stochastic momentum tell me which one is which. blue pill red pill blue is how many of you say that ok I am confused ok how many of you say that blue is momentum how many of you say that red is momentum oh there are so many who do not have an opinion not clear ok I will buy that. <laughs> So, ok. So, look at this who is taking longer u turns momentum or nag momentum roughly which guy is taking the larger u turns red guy right I mean rough, roughly speaking there is only one point to judge by this here because here they are almost same and that could happen in practice right because this is now noisy ok. So, the red curve corresponds to momentum because it is taking a larger u turn we saw that momentum takes larger u turns and the blue curve is corresponding to nag ok. So, no, no, ok I remember this was an error on the slide yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this has to be red and this has to be blue. So, ok. So, the momentum is actually red and the nag is blue ok because it is taking a shorter u turn and the reason you do not see it very clearly here is because both of these are running in the stochastic mode right ok. But you still see the relative advantage of them that nag still takes shorter u turns both of them are faster still faster than vanilla gradient descent you see that black curve at the top and both of these are faster than that both of them all three have run for the same number of iterations right. After 60 steps you see what happens to stochastic gradient descent and what happens to nag and momentum based gradient descent right ok fine and of course, you can have the mini batch versions of momentum and nag also 